Hello, welcome to Subjective Insights. Today, I'm going to chat about language. Um, it's kind of, not its essential nature as such, but it's essential structure. How that gives us a kind of quanta for meaning, you know, a meaningful atom, and how that all relates to language, oh, no, learning. Okay. Every, and and if, if you can follow this, if you can get this, it's really quite a profound kind of realisation. And when I first had it, I've, I've spoken about it in my autobiographical notes. When I first had it, shortly after, I was sectioned. Anyway, everything that can be said, can be said in any language. Some languages are more effective or more efficient at saying it than others are. But or, so, so it might take longer to say something in one language than another. But effectively, you can say anything in any language, or, or any kind of spoken language. Uh, you could even in mathematics if you attributed meaning to the symbols. Anyway, so now then, so, so that means that what we can do to understand meaning, because that's what's being conveyed through language, is we can look at the structure of one of the languages. Now, I'm quite familiar with English. And um, in English, there's four sentence types, right? There's um, simple sentences, the cat drank the milk. Compound sentences, the cat drank the milk and the dog ate the cheese. Complex sentences, the furry cat with cancer drank the milk and ate the pill. Um, <coughs> and then like interrogatives, you know, like, what are you going to do tonight? Which is a request for, for meaning, a request for, for information. Now then, all these sentence types, apart from the interrogative, but that's a kind of different kind of thing. It's not saying something, it's requesting information. These sentence types can all be reduced down to the simple sentence, the cat drank the milk. So, say the cat drank the milk and the dog ate the... You can just put a full stop after the milk and then you've got the dog doing its stuff. And in the, in the complex sentence, you could say the cat drank the milk, the cat has cancer, the cat's got fur, all that kind of stuff. So you can, you, it, it's just more cumbersome to convey the meaning or the information through just simple sentences. It's, it's more of a shorthand, the, the other sentences are. <clears throat> now what this means is that, every, right, and then everything that can be known, right? Um, like, like quantum mechanics, extended trivia, you name the domain, if it can be known, it can be said, right? So th what, what this means is that all knowledge is made up out of these very, very simple units, these simple sentences. So like, you know, electron, the particles of spin uh, and, and all of that kind of stuff. And, and so w when, you, when you're trying to understand something, a, a new field, say, before you understand it, this is quite simple, you don't understand it. So the understanding comes at the end of a process. And what happens is, the way I go about learning, is if I'm curious about something, I just read loads of stuff about it, as widely as possible. And at first, I don't really comprehend much of what I'm reading. I don't really get much of it. But after a while, a kind of critical mass of, of these simple little sentences builds up in my mind, and then an explosion of understanding happens, and then I start producing new facts within that domain. Uh, and I, I think that's a symptom of understanding. Once you understand a thing, that means you have the capacity to produce new facts within that domain, you know? To make connections, to, uh, and, and to notice implications, and so on and so forth. Now, most people kind of believe they're stupid because they, they read a lot of these textbooks or they read a lot of these philosophical texts or, or one of these philosophical or they try to and now they're reading and like, I don't understand this and it's like walking around in the dark and, and that is a bit frustrating. And so they say, oh, I don't understand this, I must be stupid and then they put it down, mistaking the beginning of the process for the end of the process. You know, they, they kind of... It's the same thing people have when they say, oh, I can't play the guitar. Well, of course you can't because you haven't tried. You haven't gone through practice to do it. And also what this means is that, that the same practice that the elites or anybody that you look up to is using to generate facts um, is open to everybody. It just takes a bit of elbow grease. 
the, the, the way I get past the frustration in a, in a new domain or with a particularly obtuse text is I just use the clock. I'll, I'll, I'll just sit down for 20 minutes or half an hour. And during those 20 minutes, half an hour, I'm sitting down. I'm not rushing through the text. I'm trying to read it. And sometimes I'll read a paragraph again and again and again and again till some kind of little intuition of understanding pops up. Goodbye.